Some plants are true wonders when it comes to growth. Plants on the cucumber and squash family have the ability to set up a large structure overnight. This year I decided to plant gourds, so I sprouted some seedlings to have them dominate the garden for a few weeks. But that is not the case for many other plants. Perennial plants prefer the slow and steady route when it comes to domination. They slowly inch in growth, but their growth is cemented in a solid, reliable foundation. While annuals dazzle practically instantly when it comes to garden time, perennials, like blueberry bushes, build for the long run. Planting these blueberry bushes was the first thing I did when we arrived at this property more than a decade ago. And while in retrospect I may have planted them too close to each other, I couldn't visualize then just how much bigger they could get once they get several years of growth. They now have flowered reliably every early spring providing the local pollinators a true feast. That is a great advantage when you stop to think about it. There really are no annual plants that flower this early in the year. That is because most annual life cycles start in early spring as seeds and only flower at least several weeks later. That can mean fewer options for local pollinators, like bumblebees, since they emerge way before most annuals have flowered. Therefore, if your garden is only comprised of annual plants, pollinators in the area may experience a hunger gap. Of course, there are other options for flowers, like lawn weeds and flowering trees that also happen to flower early. But in any case, if you give them more options locally, the more likely they are to stay. Cada dia aprende sua letra Dança a valsa da palavra vida I found it interesting how much the bumblebees enjoy the blueberry blooms, even if they are not really designed for their size, being too small to accommodate their large bodies. I noticed they have managed a workaround by piercing the sides of the petal tubes to access the nectar. Pretty ingenious if you ask me. But bumblebees and honeybees are not the only pollinators. There are several other species of native bees, flies and wasps that also help with early pollination. I planted these blueberry bushes about 12 years ago and they've zoomed up since but this year especially they have put out a flush of flowers unlike any other year and it seems like I'm gonna have a lot of fruit and I'm attributing that to one thing it's compost and actually it's not like a special compost mix or actually any compost that I made myself it's mulch. It's mulch that I dropped in. I dropped in wood, wood chips and some pine needles and it seems to be the right thing that they need. I think Dr. Elaine Ingham is right. When you prepare the soil right to the right type of plant, it makes them thrive. So I know the blueberries are an understory forest plant. So they want to have that same kind of soil. So when you provide soil that is fungal dominated, because of the type of things you add to it, then you have the right recipe for success. There are a few important things blueberries need. They need an acidic soil that is well draining. I made sure to add plenty of peat moss when first planting these bushes, and that seemed to have helped a lot in their development. But for the last two years, I added a good layer of wood chips as mulch to the top. The wood chips came from an evergreen tree with plenty of leaf litter mixed in. Perhaps that had a beneficial effect. I also noticed several strands of mycorrhizal fungi developing in the rotting wood chips. Whatever the factor was, something was going right with the blueberry bushes since despite their rather cramped spacing, they were setting a large amount of fruit like I had not seen before. I was sure this would be a great harvest year. Certainly the relentless activity of the pollinator insects had helped the flowers set fruit earlier on. Another important detail is that I planted about three different varieties close together. Blueberries, as a general rule, need another variety to pollinate properly. The clusters of berries looked picture perfect already, even while green. Coming up in the next block, I will share how the harvest turned out this year, as well as show some other tips right after this commercial. 
If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. Summer brought in the rains. There was more than plenty of rain, perhaps even too much of it. But while other plants in the garden may have suffered with this excess, the blueberries appear to have thrived. Since the more critical flowering in pollination days had long passed, the extra rain may have helped to plump up the developing green fruit. Since the spot they were planted at is well draining, they were thriving. Soon enough, the first fruits were ripening, so I could make the rounds in the morning and snack on freshly picked blueberries. If you have never tried fresh blueberry directly from the bush, you may be in for a surprise. They truly pack a punch, a strong acidity to counterbalance the sweetness. Store-bought ones always taste much more mellow in comparison. The neighborhood birds were starting to notice the bumper crop also. I don't mind sharing a bit. They usually leave plenty for me. I suppose birds can be a big problem for some people when growing berries. It is possible that as the years pass, my bushes become more frequented by them as they learn of this precious resource. One of the nice things about blueberries is that their ripening is staggered. Not all the fruits in the bush ripen together, so that allows for a constant daily supply. That is increased even more for me as I happen to plant varieties that produce and ripen in different times. For that reason, I'm able to have fresh blueberries available from the end of May up to the end of July. This was turning out to be a bumper crop from just a few blueberries. I later learned one interesting thing about their pollination that may help explain why the fruit set in these bushes was so high this year, as almost all the flowers ended up producing berries. It has to do with the many bumblebees that feasted on the nectar relentless for days. As it turns out, bumblebees are particularly good at pollinating blueberries. They happen to be more active in colder and wetter climate than honeybees. Also, because of their bigger size, they're able to sonicate or buzz pollinate the flowers to release more pollen from the flower anthers. This is called buzz pollination, and it shows just how effective native pollinators can be in our gardens. That also underscores how important it is to plant a variety of plants around our homes, mixing annuals and perennials to offer a true smorgasbord to our friendly critters, inviting them to take up residence around us. There will be a payback in plenty of fresh produce. While my blueberry bushes are great reliable sources for early spring, later on I will see bumblebees feasting on the annuals I have planted up until winter comes. So I decided to plant out my gourd vines around the garden. If the blueberries were the reliable grocery store for the bumblebees, these vines would be the pop-up carnival that arrives out of nowhere and dazzle them with treats. Gourds really hate to be transplanted, so I'm being extra careful with their roots. You really do not want to even touch much of the roots and you want to quickly get them in the ground. I hope that will lead to less transplant shock and that they will establish themselves quickly on this fence and I actually hope they will climb over this fence because currently I have wild grape growing and that doesn't produce anything. At least this will produce gourds. I planted them in a few spots around the garden. Much like cucumbers, when they enjoy their surroundings they thrive and grow out of nowhere but they can also be temperamental in less than ideal conditions. A few days later, my gourd transplants were not looking their best. And while a few of the plantlets had set out strong shoots, they appeared to be at risk of dying from a bacterial wilt. Would these vines survive or would this carnival show crumble before it even started? You will find out in the next episode. See you there.